Before 2015, I hadn't heard about arsenic in rice. And then I had my own little experience with it. More on that towards the end of this video. Besides my own hard-learned lesson, you'll learn about what is arsenic, how you can be exposed, why it is harmful to humans, which are symptoms of arsenic poisoning as well as testing, how arsenic gets into rice in the first place, how much rice and rice products is safe to eat and which are the most contaminated rice products, and finally, what you can do to reduce the amount of arsenic in rice and in your daily life overall. Arsenic is a naturally occurring element in the Earth's crust. It can be found in small amounts throughout the environment, and this type of arsenic is called organic arsenic. However, it can also be released into the environment as a byproduct of agricultural and industrial processes. And this is highly toxic inorganic arsenic. Take note, though, that both forms of arsenic can have negative side effects on humans. People are exposed to elevated levels of inorganic arsenic through drinking contaminated water, using contaminated water in food preparation or irrigation of food crops, industrial processes, eating contaminated food and smoking tobacco. Find out what are the levels of arsenic in the groundwater of your country. According to the Environmental Protection Agency, the standard for arsenic in drinking water is 10 micrograms per litre. However, drinking water with arsenic at levels lower than the EPA standard over many years can still increase your risk of cancer. As far as food goes, there may be traces of arsenic in meat, fish and poultry, the latter containing the highest levels, and this is due to the antibiotics in chicken feed. And then also rice has been found to contain higher levels than water. Long-term exposure to inorganic arsenic, mainly through drinking water and food, can lead to chronic arsenic poisoning. Skin lesions and skin cancer are the most common symptoms. Symptoms of arsenic poisoning may include red or swollen skin, skin changes such as new or sore lesions, abdominal pain, nausea and vomiting, drowsiness, headaches, confusion, diarrhea, abnormal heart rhythm, muscle cramps, tingling of fingers and toes. In severe cases, we can also add a metallic taste in the mouth and garlicky breath, excess saliva, problems swallowing, blood in the urine, hair loss, stomach cramps, convulsions and excessive sweating. Also, those with higher arsenic levels tend to have more allergies, tend to not feel as well, tend to not sleep as well. Should you need to be tested, there are urine tests. Those should be carried out in one to two days from the initial exposure. And secondly, tests of hair and fingernails. Those can determine the level of arsenic exposure over a period of up to 12 months. Consult your hair care provider. Mainly, the toxic inorganic arsenic comes from pesticides. Now, considering that, would organic rice then have less arsenic? The answer is no, because arsenic pesticides were banned 30 years ago. However, 30,000 tons of arsenic chemicals already got dumped onto cotton fields in the southern states in the US. So it's understandable why there still are residues. And this is why they specifically select for arsenic-resistant varieties of rice plants. On the other hand, humans haven't become arsenic-resistant. If your only source of rice is just rice, then the recommendation is no more than one to two servings for the whole week. For example, one serving is one quarter of a cup of dry, uncooked rice, or one cup of rice milk. Rice is so contaminated because it accumulates 10 times more arsenic than other grains. For the exact table for recommended servings of different rice products, go to consumerreports.org. The link is below in the box. The most contaminated rice products are Rice Krispies, Brown Rice Syrup. Toddler formulas with added organic brown rice syrup have 20 times higher levels of toxic arsenic. Rice Milk. UK has banned the consumption of rice milk for young children and no more than half a cup a day for adults. 
Rice pasta and rice cakes end up similar to pure rice. However, when pasta is cooked, we'd expect the levels to be cut by 40 to 60 percent. About that later on. Rice vinegar, though, doesn't seem to be anything to worry about. Let's start with choosing the right type of rice. Which rice has the most and the least of arsenic? Extensive testing has found that long grain white rice, which is what most people eat, has more arsenic than medium or short grain white rice. Now, brown rice on average has two thirds more arsenic than white rice. However, the arsenic in brown rice appears to be less bioavailable. It seems that the bran in the brown rice helps bind it up. Now, what about red and black rice? Those may contain less arsenic than white rice, but it's greatly place dependent. For example, colored rice samples purchased in the US were better than brown or white. However, a dozen samples of red rice purchased from Europe were as bad or even worse as brown rice. It's noteworthy though that the wild rice samples contained only half as much toxic arsenic as brown rice. So when it comes to choosing the right rice, diversify your diet with different types of rice and rice from different regions. Or even better, consider alternatives for rice, especially for infants. If you're gluten-free, then buckwheat, quinoa, millet, sorghum and teff are great options. In case gluten is not an issue, enjoy barley, rice and spelt as well. Avoid processed foods sweetened with brown rice syrup. Instead of rice milk, consider better options like oat, hemp, soy and almond milk. Although you don't want kids to be drinking too much almond milk. There have been a few case reports of little kids drinking like 4 cups a day, running into kidney stone problems. This is because almonds are relatively high in oxalates, about five times more than soy milk. And then cook rice correctly to reduce arsenic content. It's been found that 10 to 1 water to rice ratio seems to be the best, reducing the toxic arsenic by almost 60%. Rinsing, however, doesn't seem to do much. What's more is that cooking brown rice in plenty of water only reduces the iron content by 5%. So if you do want to keep consuming rice, I'd recommend going for brown rice cooked in 10 to 1 water to rice ratio. One of the reasons is also that white rice is fortified. Minerals and vitamins are literally sprayed onto its surface. So now when you cook it in excess water, you end up discarding a great proportion of those vitamins and minerals. For example, only rinsing white rice removes most of the B vitamins, but has almost no effect on the B vitamins in brown rice. It's because it's got the nutrition inside. Also, iron gets wiped out in white rice while rinsing and cooking, whereas it stays strong in brown rice. But even with that 60% of reduction in arsenic, what does it really mean? We could cut excess cancer risk more than half, from like 165 times the acceptable cancer risk to about 66 times the acceptable cancer risk. So maybe consider the alternatives. Which brings me to my personal experience with arsenic in rice. In September 2015, the Swedish National Food Agency published a study that confirmed the content of arsenic in rice and in rice products. It's worth mentioning that rice cakes were not recommended to give under six-year-olds. They said that it's dangerous for young children to consume even two to four rice cakes per week. During that summer, in 2015, it had become my habit to consume rice cakes uh, every evening as a late-night snack because I thought it's a healthier alternative to sweet treats. Now, I had approximately six cakes every day. Now, Consumer Reports recommends no more than seven points worth of rice products per week. As per their table, I got five points daily from those six rice cakes. That translates into 35 weekly points that is five times more than recommended. And that's just from the rice cakes. 
In the middle of September, when I had been consuming the rice cakes for about two months, I started feeling weird. I couldn't really point a finger on anything particular though. I just felt strange and tired. By the end of September, I had headaches every day and throughout the night, tingling of my face and hands, fatigue, dizziness, elevated heart rate, and balance disorders. And let me just add the craziest dreams I've, I've ever experienced. That might have been the only positive side in this situation. To illustrate, one night when I tried to get up to go to the toilet, I simply couldn't because I wasn't capable of making difference between ceiling and floor. So I simply need to lay back down. And let me tell you, that was quite a scary feeling. Needless to say, that episode really made me worry. And by chance, I stumbled upon the Swedish article talking about arsenic in rice. I immediately started to search for arsenic poisoning symptoms. And voila, those were my symptoms. I ditched all rice and rice cakes immediately and felt okay in two to three days with all the ailments gone. Now tell me something, have you experienced something similar yourself? Or do you know someone who has dealt with the consequences of arsenic in rice?